So yeah, so these are some of the, of the things that we deal with, gentlemen. And so uh, it's, it's important to, to be able to distinguish between the shadow of being overshadowed, over forecast. Anybody know what like an over forecast, a cloudy day? Sometimes we walk under the cloud of our father and we're having to live up to that positive, such big bar they set, or we're having to live according to the, to the negative bar they set. Okay, but it's important that we realize that we have the power to step outside the shadow. We have the power to realize, as, as a Junior said, yeah, my dad's a nice dude, my dad's, a, you know, and so this is not dad bashing, by no means. This is not, we're throwing rocks at our father. But this is the moment as men, as we're transitioning to manhood, that we can learn, that we can actually see the picture of our father and say, okay, this is great. This was not so great. Okay, or sometimes, why do I feel certain ways when I look at my dad? Let me share the story briefly. We got about eight minutes. If you want to fill out the uh, the evaluation, you can. My grandmother, my grandmother's in Michigan. I was born in Michigan. My grandmother is near Kalamazoo, Michigan. She started coming down to Texas a little bit more often about 10 years ago, okay? And when I saw my grandmother at the church, my parents pastored the church in Lockhart, Texas, and then both of them, my mom and my stepdad, gone home to be with the Lord. But as they passed the church, my uh, grandma came to the church, and I was swole. I had rocks in my jaws and feelings for my grandmother. I didn't like her. And I had to tell my wife, why do I not like my granny? Granny's nice. She's cool. She's like a 76-year-old. No, she's 80 now. And she's hilarious. I mean, she's funny. She's a cool grandma. But I didn't like her. And it was because of the way she treated me when I was younger, I didn't get over that. I didn't realize that I had bias towards my, my grandmother. So I had to go back and reflect what happened to me when I was younger that I'm having these feelings towards granny. Uh, and one of them was that when we were fishing, she, when I was five years old, the hook caught behind my ear. She cast back, and the hook caught my ear. And when she went to the, the throw it down, and guess what? My ear was tugged, and I went with it. I heard a little bit. Another thing was because she was very vocal, and I had a speech impediment growing up. I couldn't speak too well, and one, one Sunday in church, I raised my hand in testimony service. I was three. They said, praise the Lord, little man. I said, I thank the Lord, but that, but that be the boy. My family knew what I said because they can interpret they had been around long enough, but they didn't know what I said. And so my family said, oh, it's okay. What I had said was, I thank the Lord the rats didn't eat me up because at that time we had some pretty big rats, and I was just giving praise to God that I didn't get eaten. But so my grandma would poke fun of the way I talked a little bit. So 20 years later, I had issues with my grandmother, and I had to deal with that. Sometimes we have issues with our fathers, and it's important at some point we deal with those issues, that we feel a certain way. We may not be able to go through everything at that moment and, and go through it piece by piece and deal with it. Sometimes we try to deal with it, and it's stuff's not coming out because it's so deep within us. But eventually, sorry. We're able to kind of maybe deal with it, but sometimes we're not ready to deal with it. So we just say, you know what, at some point I have issues concerning my father. I got to check into that sometime. I got to be ready to deal with it and take it layer by layer. So this conversation is about sometimes look, stepping out of the, the overcast, positive or negative, of our father and realizing that we are great individuals. We are awesome young men and men striving to be the best that we are and leave the best example and legacy and teach what was not taught to us, the relationship issues, how to be a man, things that we need to, and be balanced based off the choices we make, based off maybe my dad wasn't there, he didn't want me. Why? Because he wasn't there. He made me feel that he didn't want me, so he wasn't there. So stepping out of these forces, one of the things, I, I think I had it here. Uh, I didn't get it. it I thought I had the crab in the bucket. I guess I deleted the slide. Anyway, I had a, buck, uh, uh, a slide about the crabs in the bucket and how every time I try to step out of my father's shadow, I keep getting pulled down, I keep being reminded. I want you to see your father's not, a, not as, I don't want to be like him. Blaze your own trail, but don't rebel. You know, don't overcompensate. Find your own walk in life. Become who you were born to be. Know this, that you are not the mistakes that you made, you are not the mistakes that you will make. You are more than the accomplishments and the mistakes of your father. You are you. You are your own man, your own being. Okay? You are your own man. So if you find yourself looking like your dad, making some of his choices, having those features, so to speak, don't trip. That's your pops. That's your dad. That's your father. That's who you came from. For those that don't have the, that, that may have a stepdad or other father figures, if you find your way doing some same things that our mentors do, that's because that's, that's our mentors and they're speaking to, into our lives. 
Be careful who you allow to speak into your life. Be careful who you, you, who you allow yourself to line up with, who you're running with, who you're in, in, listening to. Sometimes we can do so well, Junior and, and, and uh, Jaden, or so, want to do so good. We're listening to all this positive message and, and listening to podcasts. Be careful who you're listening to. Be careful what you're listening to. Because you're feeding your spirit. You're feeding your wholeness. You're feeding who you are. So it's transitioning from walking under your father's shadow to stepping outside the cloud a little bit and walking side by side, realizing, okay, this is what I can learn. Maybe my dad turned to drugs. Maybe my dad turned to women when this happened. But he didn't have the coping mechanisms to deal with the stress, to deal with the weight, how, how to, to, to talk. So what can I grab from his experience to be balanced in the word? That's what my dad said. I asked him like a month and a half ago. I took, we took, went out to lunch. I said, Dad, how did you break the cycle? How did you realize that you wanted to stop running games and stop trying to be all about you and realize to be more of a father? I didn't say it like that, but I, I may, because there was, he would say, you know, he wasn't all that he, we needed at times. He said, man, it was God. He said, I realized that you and my, my, as my kids started showing me godly examples that I needed based off your lifestyle that you were leading as my children. I knew that it was time for me to do better. And I knew I had to go back to the father and be more balanced. So it's important as men that we don't go all the way to the left, all the way to the right, but we stay balanced. It's important that we step out of our shadows and realize that as fathers, we're making a big difference by showing up. As being those mentors, we're stepping up and we're being the best that we can be. How do we change that? How do we start navigating? I didn't learn how to be a man because no one told me how to be a man. I learned on my own. We as men need to start pouring into our sons and start teaching what manhood looks like. Having a ritual, okay, this is when you know that you become a man is by X, Y, and Z. Hey, I'm taking you out when we're 16. We're going to just have fun. I'm not waiting until I'm 16 to have the talk. I'm talking to you about, the, about sex. Remember, maybe you're 10 years old, and we'll have an open dialogue up until you get married. But what's the defining point of manhood? What does manhood look like? So it's looking at our fathers and realizing this is an example they left us. Take the negative, take the positive, examine, walk side by side with them, whether they're living or not, and be your own man. Be your own person. This is my family as I'm closing. My wife, been married to her for 17 and a half years. I haven't always been the best dad. There's been some times I was addicted to pornography and I was doing some things I had no business doing. Got it from the bloodline. Got it from things that there was just a weakness in my family. But how I couldn't be the father that my daughter, we were separating, my wife and I, about to get a divorce. It was nothing but the hand of God that intervened. But she called me one day. I called her check, and checking on her at bedtime. We were separated for about a month. Called my daughter. She was about two or three. She said, Daddy, when are you coming home? Based off the choices I was making, I have separated our relationship. I have pushed me and my wife away based off what I was doing. How to man up and, and fix things and go to the Father, earn her trust back. Now I think I'm a pretty good dad. I'm striving to be the best me I can be. So in closing, I encourage you to be the best you you can be. Don't just use your father as a crutch. Don't just stay mad at your father. You may not be ready to unpack all the dirt. But at some point, no, you know what? I got to deal with some issues. I got to deal with some stuff. And with God's help, we're going to do it. Uh, so this is my information. Any questions as we close?